show. Go, go, go. Let's go, go, go. And show what good friends we can Let's be. Let's give it a try. Come on. Let's go, go, go. And we'll start a commotion. Set friendship in motion. Set friendship in motion. Set friendship in motion. Thomas and the Trees There had been an overnight windstorm on the island of Sodor. The wind had blown several things over, leaving several lines blocked on the railway. Everyone had to work very hard indeed to clean up the island. Thomas had been sent by Sir Topham Hatt to collect some new telephone poles at the shunting yards to take to Farquhar. Harvey was pleased to see him. Hello, Thomas. Be careful when delivering those telegraph poles to Farquhar. I haven't had the chance to clear any debris from your branch line, because I had to help and clear away some fallen trees from Henley's forest, but I can clear the debris from your line as soon as I'm finished clearing away the trees from the forest. Thank you, Harvey. I'll take great care on my branch line with this important delivery. Good luck clearing away all those trees. And with that, Thomas set off for Farquhar. As Thomas travelled along his branch line, he could see that there was a lot of work that needed to be done. From broken roofs to fallen objects, the storm had caused a lot of damage across the island. Thomas was still making good time on his way along the branch line when suddenly, what's that? There ahead was a tree blocking the line. Thomas stopped just in time but he couldn't go any further. Oh dear, now I'll be late with my delivery. Don't worry, Thomas. We can't use the telephone since the lines are down, so we'll just have to head back to the last station to warn the station master that the line is blocked. Suddenly, there was a loud crackling noise coming from behind Thomas. Oh, that's torn it. We're stuck. Another tree had fallen behind Thomas's train, and now he was stuck on the line trapped by trees. We'll just have to get to the last station by foot. Sorry Thomas, you'll have to stay here for a while, but we'll try to be back as quick as possible. So Thomas's crew walked back to the last station, leaving Thomas alone with his delivery, with only the guard for company. He had left a red oil lamp by the tree behind Thomas to warn approaching engines. I hope Harvey arrives soon. I don't know who would be able to clear these trees off the line besides him. Just then, Thomas could hear a familiar sound coming towards him. It's Terence! Hello, Thomas. How did you get yourself into this mess? Am I glad to see you, Terence? I'm trapped by the trees, and I'm supposed to deliver these telephone poles to Farquhar. Do you think you'll be able to move these trees? Of course, Thomas. I'll be glad to help you out by moving these trees out of the way. Sure enough, as soon as Farmer Thinney tied some chains around the tree branches, Terence soon got to work. Thomas's driver and fireman arrived back at the scene on board Percy, and were surprised to see Terence clearing the tree out of Thomas's way. Well done, Terence! Before long, the track was cleared, and soon Thomas was ready to make his way again. Thank you, Terence. You certainly helped me out of a bad situation. No problem, Thomas. I'm always happy to help out whenever I can. You'd best be going. I have to clear the other tree for Percy now. Bye, Terence. In no time at all, Thomas arrived at Farquhar safe and sound. The engineer soon got to work with the telephone poles. At last, the telephone poles were all set and the telephone lines started working again. Thank you for delivering these telephone poles, Thomas. What would we have done without you? 
Well, I had a bit of an obstacle on my way here, but I never would have been able to get out of it without the help of Terence. He certainly is a really useful tractor. I'll be sure to give him my thanks the next time I see him. Everyone agreed that Terence had really helped out with Thomas in his delivery, and he'll always be a really useful tractor. Yeah.